Thanks, Lucy. We thought we'd just uh, briefly touch on this um, exciting initi initiative that started in 2009 called Art Start. Um, it provides set-up funding for recent creative arts graduates who are committed to a career as a professional artist. Now, this could mean a degree or a diploma, uh, even a certificate for, I think is the minimum level, uh, in creative writing or performing arts, visual arts, music, whatever your art form may be. And grants are to fund services, resources, skills development and equipment hire or purchase um, that help graduate artists create their arts business or build an income generating career in any arts area, whether that's visual, performance, writing, whatever. Um, writers and visual artists who recently received Art Start funding were supported uh, for studio space and equipment hire, mentorships, financial advice and other professional development opportunities. Um, the next closing date uh, this year for Art Start is the 27th of September. Now, to the crucial part, we thought we'd, we'd speak a little about what makes a successful Australia Council application and how to write it. So we thought we'd share with you a few pointers to remember. Um, first and foremost, perhaps most importantly, everything you need to know is on our website. Uh, latest information about our funding areas, grants and programs, previous projects we've supported, interviews with previous uh, grant recipients, uh, information about our application process and the selection criteria for each of our grant categories. Now, so once you've had a bit of a look through all of that and you, you think you've found a category that might suit, uh, we encourage you to call us with any questions you may have about your application, about your support material or if anything at all seems unclear. We have a toll-free number that you can call from anywhere in Australia and there's also a TTY telephone translator service as well if you know of anyone that uh, may need to use that. Now, once you have all the information you need, you can actually apply directly online uh, applications made using our online application system can be saved and returned to at any time before the submission date, so this gives you a lot of time to think and rethink your application and work through any uh, new ideas that arise as you go along. Um, once the board have assessed and made a decision on your application, you'll also be notified via email from this site and you can see the outcome of your application instantly. Now, during the process, you'll be asked to describe your project, obviously, uh, we can't stress enough, keep it simple and write clearly. We don't need a theoretical dissertation. Just tell us what you plan to do, how you plan to do it, and who will be doing it. For individuals in particular, um, we suggest that you consider three essential questions when preparing your outline. Why this? Why now? And why me? Now, it may sound a little silly, but truly, sincerity works well. If you're passionate about the project, hopefully this will come through in your project outline and excite the board as well. Now, generally speaking, while individuals don't have to submit a budget, organisations do for the most part. And so, as an organisation applying to the Australia Council, you should remember that your budget also tells a story, just like your project description. Just be sure not to make it a work of fiction. Um, make sure your project is reasonably budgeted. Make sure you're paying reasonable fees for the artists involved. If you remember before, uh, artists' careers and fees to artists is a strategic priority area for the council, so that's something to always keep in your mind when preparing a budget as part of your application. Now, another essential part of your application is the support material, as this is going to demonstrate the quality of the previous work of the artists involved in the project. Uh, for instance, make sure not to send it in looking like this, uh, for, particularly for literature applications. Make sure it's typed, if it's manuscript material, with a 1.5 or double spacing at least, um, or a copy of the published version if you're using published work. Um, make sure that you're submitting support material appropriate to the proposed project in your application. Uh, for individuals applying to literature, this means that the sample should be in the genre of your project. Now, if you're unsure again, you should just call us and, and check with us. This applies to all boards. Um, it's important not only to submit the best material you have, but also the material that's most appropriate for the category to which you're applying. Finally, don't apply at the last minute. 
Um, if you start writing your application on the, the day of the closing date, it won't be as good an application as it could be. And if you run into technical difficulties, you, you could cause yourself a lot of unnecessary stress, and we won't be there after hours to calm you down. Um, start preparing and filling out the online form well before the closing date, and that way if you have any questions as you go along, you'll have time to get in touch um, and we can work through them as they arise. Now, in summary, we thought we'd just show you a list of the um, core grants offered by the Literature and Visual Arts Boards. Um, and please remember, we're just a phone call or an email away um, if you have any questions down the track. Uh, but for now, I think we're going to open up to questions. Yeah, is that right? I'm a digital media artist. I'm also a writer and I teach media arts at UTS. Um, I'm just interested in how you cope with um, applications that actually are slightly hybrid. You are a writer and a visual artist, is yes. that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Would you like to go first? You like? <laughs> I'll go first. Well, there's, there's still a, the Inter-Arts Office, which came out of the New Media Arts Board dissolving in 2005. So technically they're still there to kind of capture projects that might fall between funding gaps or for new artistic forms. Um, I know in the Visual Arts Board we've always funded media arts um, and in fact when the new media arts board closed a lot of that funding went to us and so we have media artists on our board or and in an assessment meeting we'll get peers in to kind of to have that knowledge to sort of cover any areas we think perhaps are, are missing or lacking. Um, generally we do get a lot of interdisciplinary projects that come to us but for the Visual Arts Board to assess them they need to have a fairly strong visual component obviously. So. I guess the thing is, um, as an applicant, always, like we were saying before, talk to the program officers and try and gauge where you think you might best fit, or uh, even perhaps you can just play up a part of that application that um, would be appeal more appealing to that particular board. Um, you can also apply to several different boards. The Australia, you can actually make five applications a year to the Australia Council. So pretty good to just talk to everyone and, and hedge your bets, absolutely. Yeah. Did you want to say anything? Um, oh, similarly, I mean, in a, in a literature application, there's um, experts from the field in each genre and the board does fund illustration. So there's going to be um, people, you know, visual people in the room as well. Um, and there's always the board members and then a similar number of peers from the field each year as well. But it is that thing of identifying the categories that you think are most suitable to this project and, um, and, and you know, selling the way that this, this category fits into that project to the board, yeah. This seems to me to be well suited to anybody who is brought up with English as their first language. What about people who may have quite brilliant literary or even visual arts ideas, but who need to present this in Vietnamese or Cambodian? I mean, is there no provision within your uh, structure for people putting in a case in a language which is not English? Are we not meant to be a multicultural society? We, we do have a category for work uh, being published in languages other than English and, and Lucy manages that. Yep. Um, it's called Load yep. um, and um, basically it's a collaboration between um, the author and uh, the publisher and the author um, writing in um, the langu language is other than English um, talk to the publisher about their project and then the publisher puts in the application um, because we are very keen in the past when we've funded um, these projects standalone we have found that they haven't been able to get publishing outcomes so we're trying to encourage um, this collaboration so that the books actually get out into the marketplace so we do have a category that um, that covers what you're talking about and it's called a load. Um, when I say about um, funding uh, people who are older, who are new writers, has that ever been talked about at all? Uh, the Literature Board um, uh, defines emerging as um, the number of publications that you've had. Yeah. The, there's an acknowledgement that writers emerge at any age. So Thank you. There's, there's no, <laughs> no age barrier. And I just add the same for the Visual Arts Board. Um, it isn't a young and emerging category. It's just an emerging category. Okay. 